Good day. In this video, we're going to look at four examples where you have to work out the equation of a cubic function. In each example, the different pieces of information will be provided, and then you must use different methods to get to what A, B, C, and D is. In this case, you should know that this is the formula of a cubic function. They gave us these coordinates, and we can see that these are x-intercepts, because the y is not in each coordinate, that's an extra coordinate, then you must learn this formula that we use if we are provided with the x-intercepts. So in this case, they gave us the formula, and they said these four points lie on the graph. Find the equation of this cubic function. So in this case, we will use this formula. Substitute the x values into x1, x2, and x3. We have a minus 2 and a minus, and a minus 2 will give me a plus 2, and we'll end up with this. They gave us another coordinate, 3 and 15. The 15 we replace in the place of y, and the 3 we replace in each x place. We simplify the brackets out, and solve for a by dividing by minus 15 on both sides. Then you replace the a back in there, and you times this out. And after you've times all the brackets out and times the minus 1 in, this is the final equation of this cubic function. The second problem, they gave us the formula again, and they gave us this information written in function notation. What this is saying is over here, if x is naught on the graph, the y value will be minus 4. Here it says, if x is 1, the y will be naught. If x is minus 2, the y will be naught. And it says here, where x is naught, the gradient is naught, all written in one sentence. So in this sum, we will work with the original f of x, which we have over here. And we also have to work out the first derivative to use it. Because I told us f of naught is minus 4, we can replace the y with minus 4, replace all the x values with naught, then we'll see that the d is equal to minus 4. If you times this out, naught times anything is naught, so this falls away, this falls away, and this falls away. So we now know that the equation looks like this. We have a y-intercept at the back of minus 4. Because they said here at the back, the first derivative where x is naught, the gradient will be naught, we work out the first derivative of this formula as it stands. Then we replace the x with naught and equate that to naught, which will look like this. If you simplify this, you will see that c is equal to 0. Because c is 0, that part of the formula then falls away, because 0 times x will give me nothing. So we have the formula looking like this now. And the first derivative will look like this. Just going to reduce this that we get space to work in. Then in the beginning, in this red circle, they told us f of 1 is 0 and f of minus 2 is 0. That means f of 1 is 0 means we have a coordinate x is 1, y is 0. f of minus 2 is equal to 0 means we have a x is minus 2 and a y is 0. So we have two coordinates on this graph. So we take this formula that we now have and substitute this coordinate in here and separately substitute this coordinate in here. So you substitute x with 1, and you substitute y with 0, and you end up with this, the first part of a simultaneous equation, with two variables unknown. Do the same with minus 2 and 0. Substitute the minus 2 in the place of x everywhere, and equate that to 0 for y. And we have a second part of a simultaneous equation with two unknowns. Now we'll do simultaneous equations. I took the equation 1, and I wrote it underneath equation 2 here, after timesing it by minus 4 right through. I'm going to use elimination. So this equation 1 is still the same over here, although it looks a little bit different. Now we add equation 1 and equation 2. Naught plus naught is naught. Minus 8a minus 4a is minus 12a. Then plus 4b minus 4b will cancel each other. And then minus 4 plus 16 is plus 12. Now we can solve for a. If you minus 12 on both sides, you'll get minus 12 equals to minus 12a, and then a equals to 1. 
Let me substitute this A back into any one of the equations 1 or 2. I replaced it back into the place of that A. It should look like this. And then we just solve for B. And then you'll see B is equal to 3. Then the final equation of this cubic function is this. Please stop the video and get your brain around what we did to find this equation. On the next problem, they gave us this formula with a piece of the information already given to us. And they told us to work out what A and D is. And they told us that one of the turning points is 2 and minus 3. One of the turning points or stationary points. You should know that if you want to work out the stationary point of a cubic function, you work out your first derivative and you equate it to 0. So it gave us the x value, and we know that if we replace the x value with 2, the gradient will be 0. So we take the first derivative, replace the x with 2, and equate it to 0. If you simplify this, you'll get 12a is equal to 24, and therefore a is equal to 2. So now the equation looks like this, and we still just have to work out what the value of d is. They told us that 2 and minus 3 is a turning point. That means this coordinate lies on the graph. We can just substitute this coordinate into this equation. Substitute the y with minus 3 and all the x values with 2. Then you get d is equal to 17. Then the final equation will look like this. The a will be 2 and the d will be 17. The last problem of this video is we have to find the equation of this cubic function. They provided us, they said here yeah, f of 2 is naught. If accent of 1 is naught, the second derivative when x is minus 2, the answer is minus 17. Second derivative when x is 2, the answer is 7. This implies we have a coordinate where x is 2, y is 0 on the graph. This implies where x is 1, the gradient is naught, so one of the x's of the turning points or stationary points is 1. And here they're just telling us something about the second derivative. To answer this question, we will need the original function formula, the formula of the first derivative, and we need the formula of the second derivative. Because they gave us two pieces of information in this red circle on the second derivative, I took the second derivative, and then I did what they said over here to it. They said that if the x value in your second derivative is minus 2, the answer will be minus 17. So we take minus 2, replace it everywhere in the place of x in my second derivative, and equate it to minus 17. Then I get this equation with two variables, part of a simultaneous equation that's coming. Then we do the same with this. Replace the x with 2 in the second derivative, and equate it to 7. Then we get another equation with two of the same variables, and now we can do simultaneous equations. Again, using elimination, I can just write this equation 2 underneath equation 1. If you add equation 1 and 2, the minus 12a plus 12a will be nothing. 2b plus 2b is 4b, and if you add this, you get minus 10. Final answer, the value of b is minus 5 over 2. Let me substitute this back into either equation 1 or 2. I took equation 1 and substituted the b with minus 5 over 2. If you simplify that, you're going to get a is equal to 1. Please stop the video and just make sure that you understand what happened. At this stage, our equation looks like this. We worked out our a and our b. Then it told us the first derivative, if you replace the x with 1, the answer will be 0. So we work out the first derivative of this formula, replace the x with 1, and equate it to 0. Like this. And if you simplify it, you'll see c is equal to 2. Then our equation will look like this. And they did tell us f of 2 is 0, so they gave us this coordinate on the function. So I can take this and substitute it into this equation in the place of x and y. So y is 0, and all the x values I make it 2. If you simplify that, d is equal to minus 2. The final equation will then look like this. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video, and subscribe to the channel. If you run into a school mathematical problem that you need help with, you may contact us on this number.